but uh, I'm recording this so that you guys can go back or and 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 look at the uh, footage, or I can other students can look at it. Um, so a couple of things is um, because everyone's muted, and I'm and I want you guys to ask questions. Is that there's a chat feature. Um, down below so if you take your little cursor and go to the, like the bottom bar where it says like mute and stop video um, and participants and stuff like that there is a chat button so can i just start everybody off with can everybody um find the chat feature and write an emoji or uh, put an emoji or put just how they're doing today um it is a beautiful day in northeast ohio if you're not from northeast ohio maybe tell me where you're watching this from or um if you are from cleveland maybe tell me you're cleveland so if everyone can hop on that chat uh just so that i know that everyone can hear me Okay, so Northeast Ohio, Toledo, hello from Toledo. Uh, for the two people that just joined us, what we're, we're gonna be doing is if you could find the chat feature, which is at the bottom of the screen, it says chat. If everyone could just put a chat in there of either how they're doing today um, or and where they're listening from, that would be great, just so that I know where everyone's from. So I've got some Cleveland, I got Columbus, I got Akron. Um, Abigail from Akron, um, are you uh, are you from Akron? Because I I lived most of my life in Akron myself. I went to Akron Firestone High School. If anyone knows where that's from, yeah, Cleveland. I am from. I'm currently in sunny Cleveland, so you can't see it right now. But uh, because I have my my fun background going on, um, but. Um, I am in Cleveland, so I actually live in, uh, in Cleveland. I live in Cam's Corner. So if you uh, want to know where this webinar is being live streamed from, it is uh, from Cam's Corner. Okay, so you're okay. So you're from you're from Kent, but you live in Akron now. Yeah. So I went to Akron Firestone High School. So if you know where that is in Akron, that's about where I lived. I lived right around there on the like northwest end of Akron. That's where I lived. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. If you just joined us, there's a chat feature down uh, below. Uh, and that chat feature, if you could just tell me where you're from. We got Brooklyn, New York. Awesome, I think that's the furthest we've got is Brooklyn, New York. Um, oh, fellow Cam's Corner resident. Oh, so I'm gonna be watching the chat this whole time. So if you have any questions, feel free to write in the chat. Um, as I'm going through this. So I'm going to go really quickly, just through our majors really quick, just because I really want to focus today's um, webinar on the streamlined um, admissions requirements for summer 2020, uh, which is fast approaching. Um, so we're going to leave that one alone. And more importantly, fall of 2020. So these are the temporary admissions requirements because of COVID-19. So to start off, um, my name is Kristen Blazik and I am the coordinator of student recruitment for the College of Urban Affairs. We also call the Levin College. So if you can see behind me, I have my beautiful background that says Levin um, and that is the name of our college. So we are the Levin College of Urban Affairs at Cleveland State. Okay, so now I am going to share my screen so that you guys can see my quick presentation. And again, I'm going to go through this presentation really quickly, just so that we can talk about the um, uh, the programs. Let me get the chat back up so you guys can. There we go. All right, I just want to make sure I have the chat. And if you see me looking off this way, by the way, um, it's because I'm on a dual monitor because how many of you guys cannot live without a dual monitor? Me, I cannot live without like the two. Okay, so I hope everyone can see the presentation. Um, at Levin, you can learn to build cities, lead communities, and change your environment uh, while immersed in a vibrant and engaging urban landscape. Learn to change the world at Levin. So this is what we're really focusing on in the college is we're learning um, how to lead communities, build communities, and really give back to our community in every way that we can. All right, so our um, 
welcome George. Uh, we got another one. Uh, just write in the find the chat for questions. So our students go into three different sectors. There's the public, private, and nonprofit sector. Really, we teach all three. Majority of our students, though, um, for this is for like the MPA, it's like a third, a third, a third. But what's interesting is that the third that goes in the public sector and third that goes in the nonprofit sector will then switch back and forth between the two. So uh, you'll see a lot of our students start in the public sector and then go to the nonprofit sector and then end up back in the uh, public sector. So we are nationally ranked. Our rankings actually just went up this year. So uh, we are third in urban policy, and then that also includes planning, 13th in local government management, and 20th in uh, nonprofit management. We're very excited this year. Our rankings went up. We are heading back up, and I'm hoping to see this trend keep going. I'm very proud of the kind of research that our faculty do, especially when it comes to policy. So we do have five master's degrees and one PhD. So just really quickly, the master's of public administration, it's 42 credit hours. It is dual with uh, the Cleveland Marshall Law School. So you can do a dual degree with both us and law. So you get a JD and uh, MPA at the same time. And we do have specializations in like public city management and nonprofit management. Students uh, who are interested in nonprofit can either go into the MPA or the nonprofit management depending on what they want to do career wise. Um, and this is NASPA accredited. And it's so NASPA accredited that our dean is actually also on their board. So then we have the Masters of Urban Planning and Development. This is our Muppet or um, for planning. So if you want to go be a city planner, work in planning, historic preservation, um, or neighborhood development, economic development, this is a really great one to do. This is also accredited through the Planning Accreditation Board, or PAB, um, as I like to call it. And what that means is that um, they've accredited us to teaching um, so well in the planning program that when, uh, if you were to go and take the Oh, I always forget the acronym, but the planning licensure, uh, when you go to sit for that exam, you can sit for it sooner because you've done our program. And there's, if you have any questions on that, just put it in the chat. I'm happy to answer more questions about it if anyone has questions about um, the planning licensure. Next is the Masters of, Admin, uh, of Nonprofit Administration and Leadership. Sorry the Master's of Nonprofit Administration and Leadership. This one is really focused in on nonprofit. If you want to work for a nonprofit or start your own nonprofit, this is a really great one. Um, you really learn everything you need to know about it. We've had a couple of these students go on and uh, we'll see one of them is Linda Vegas, who is the um, COO of City Mission. And then we have a couple other ones that went to go to, whoops, wrong way, went and, uh, it's like just going forward for me um, and went to the Cleveland Foundation. So now we have a couple of alumni at the Cleveland Foundation. So the Masters of Arts in Environmental Studies. So how I describe this one the best is that you have environmental engineers who are creating the wind turbines. You have the environmental scientists who are uh, researching uh, about, you know, what's going on with the environment. They're going out, they're going out into the, you know, uh, going out and taking water samples, bringing it back to the lab, and, you know, analyzing it and writing a report on how many amoebas they found in the water and why it's important. But then you have us that goes and looks at the policy and says, okay, so this is why we need to have sustainable energy. This is why we need to, you know, worry about our water um, quality and why we need to stop dumping in water. Um, and that's where environmental studies come in. And this one is also a dual degree and so is the planning, uh, a dual degree with law. So if anyone has any questions about the dual degrees with law, I'm happy to answer those. Just put it in the chat and I will answer them. 
Next is our most traditional master's degree. This is the MSUS, the Master's of Science in Urban Studies. This one is uh, very flexible when it comes to the electives. So if you like a little bit of planning, a little bit of history, a little bit of administration, this is a really great master's degree for you. Or if you're really interested in maybe going on and doing research in urban and you, are, you want to kind of get a taste for it, this is a really great one because this one will feed right into our PhD in urban studies. Um, and then if anyone has any questions about um, any of these programs, feel free to put it in the chat. So with the PhD, um, this one uh, is really great if you're interested in researching urban areas, especially policy and administration, along with planning. So this is where I'm going to spend a lot of time because I really want to talk about how we are streamlining our graduate admissions. So grab my notes on this one. So in the past, we have required that you have a minimum of a 3.0. That is still a thing where uh, we like to say that you have to have a 3.0. However, we're flexible. The College of Graduate Studies requires that you have at least a 2.75. If you have below that, we can still talk about it. Um, that's a conversation I can have. If you have above a 3.0, that's great. Um, but that's really where we'd like to see students at is a 3.0. The next one are the GRE scores. It needs to be at least in the 40th percentile, 50th percentile for planning. Now, right now, because of COVID-19 and the stay at home, you know, the stay put, the stay at home, we no longer are requiring the GRE as a requirement for the fall semester, it is waived. So if you apply today for fall or up until, you know, I would like to say July, we have rolling admission, you are not gonna be required to do the GRE. We are requiring still two letters of recommendation. Um, if you can't get two letters of recommendation, just let us know. Now, a big preface to this is that these requirements doesn't mean that it's easier to be accepted. Um, what I've talked to the program directors about is that when they're uh, looking at admissions requirements and uh, usually the GRE and the, um, the GRE and your GPA are the two that they look at the most, right? Because we don't require an essay or a personal statement to do this. They look at those two. And if you have a high GPA, but your GRE wasn't the greatest, well, they'd lean more on the GPA and see, oh, you know, in statistics, they did well and stuff like that. Whereas when they don't have the GRE, they are relying heavily on um, your GPA. So to boost, you know, your, your um, admissions, you know, it, you might be required to do a personal statement. I'm almost saying that, you know, if you would like a little boost in, you know, um, the program director is looking at your, your admissions requirements and your admissions materials, if you want that little boost, writing a one to two page personal statement of why you wanna do the program and sending it in with your application is great. Because another thing is, is that your application is free right now. So if you're gonna apply to Cleveland State University, I kid you not, for grad school, all you need to do is do the free application, which will take you 10, 15 minutes. It's just name, address, which program you want to do. Um, we are also accepting unofficial transcripts. We prefer official transcripts. So wherever you're from, uh, wherever you went for your undergraduate, um, if they do electronic transcripts, perfect. If they are only doing paper transcripts, you can submit unofficial transcripts. The big key to submitting undergraduate transcripts is that you are going to need to submit official transcripts eventually, right? Before the start of fall semester, we will need to get official transcripts. But this way we can get you through the process a little bit easier with the unofficial, get you situated, and then we can figure out the official transcripts later. So once again, the application, free. Uh, we are accepting, we need your transcripts. If you went to Cleveland State University, Congratulations, we already have them, so you don't need to send them in. I get that question a lot. 
we, if you went to Cleveland State and you graduated from Cleveland State, even if you graduated in 1966, we have your transcripts. So we have those, that's fine. Um, if you didn't go to Cleveland State, try and get official transcripts electronically sent to us. If not, we are accepting unofficial at this time. The GRE is waived because students cannot take it um, right now. Uh, they're, they're figuring out a way for students to take it, but because it's not universal, everyone can take it. Um, we're just saying, you know, no, you don't need it for our program. Um, and then two letters of recommendation. And if you can't get two, just let me know. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about those admissions requirements? So they're really streamlined. Um, you don't have to do the GRE waiver request. That's what you typically would have to do. If you are planning on starting in spring of 2021, so you're looking at maybe coming in January, um, if you're uh, thinking about coming in spring of 2021, they, we, these are the admissions requirements or any time after that as of right now. We, we are hoping to be back on campus in fall to see you know businesses back open safely and as long as they're open safely and the GRE is being given out, um, then we will resume these admissions requirements. But for fall, these are the admissions requirements of free application, uh, we will take unofficial transcripts, and no GRE. So does anyone have any questions on that? There's a little chat, so a couple of people have joined us since. There is a chat um, feature at the bottom of your screen, it should say chat. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free. I'm watching the chat while I'm doing this. Does anyone have any questions about those admissions requirements? Okay, here we go. Um, what is the fall application deadline? So the application for fall, we have rolling admission. I would like to have everything in by the end of July. That always seems to be a really great time to have everything in because then you've been accepted. It usually takes about two weeks to be accepted to get everything in. So um, I like the end of July as just like a, your own mental deadline is have everything by the end of July. Now, big thing with that is that have I gotten all the admissions requirements or like all the admissions material in the week before school started at the end of August and got them accepted and registered the week of classes? Yes. I don't like doing that. It is very stressful. And if I'm talking to you now, I would prefer that you turn it in by the, by the end of July. But just so you know, I will get you in if you give me all of your information the week before school starts. But again, I don't like to do that. Um, do, do, do. I graduated from the University of Akron in 2015. Will my GPA from that year be used? Yes. So it's whatever, wherever you graduated, from your bachelor's degree, if you, oh, big caveat, if you already have a master's degree from a US accredited institution, so you went to University of Akron or Kent State or University of Arkansas or anything like that, where it's a US accredited institution by the Higher Learning Commission, um, if you have a master's degree from there already, then the GRE gets waived anyways because you already have a master's degree. However, it is your graduating credit hours. So I get this question a lot. I get students that ask me like, oh, I went to Tri-C and got an associate's degree. And then I went to, um, you know, OU and got my bachelor's degree, right? So which GPA are you looking at? I'd be looking at the OU one, which everyone knows when you transfer, your grade doesn't transfer, just the credit hours. So if you got a 3.5 at OU and a 2.4 at at Tracy, we don't average it out. We actually only need your OU transcripts, and that's the GPA that we're going to be looking at, just the OU. Is the planning PhD program still accepting applications? Um, so, no. The deadline for the PhD for fall 2020 was January 31st. However, and I'm going to, um, however, when you apply for the PhD program, when you apply for the pre issue program, there is about a year's worth of, of classes that you have to take as a prerequisite. So it's a couple urban studies classes, a couple planning classes, just to get you to the place to start the PhD program. Now, if you were to apply before January 31st and get accepted, 
into the PhD program to start fall of 2020. You would do a year of prerequisites in the PhD program as a PhD student, or if you've passed the deadline, what we um, ask students to do is that you can either come in as non-degree seeking and do a year of prerequisites that, and then apply for the PhD program for fall of 21. And then in fall of 21, you're starting your PhD classes because you've done the prerequisites. You can either do that or you can apply for the Masters of Science and Urban Studies program. Um, again, the application is free. If you apply for that master's program and tell us that you're going to go into the PhD, the prerequisites are all in that master's degree. So you can start that master's degree, apply for the PhD, and if you get accepted, continue on with the PhD. So that's a way of, if you wanted to start in the fall, you can still do it. Um, you won't be a PhD student, however, you'll be doing all the classes necessary to advance in the PhD program. So you're not losing any time, it's just your code of being a PhD student versus being a master's student is just a little bit different. But most people have to do about a year of prerequisites, and so that's when you can apply for the PhD program. And then the additional requirements uh, for the PhD program, uh, as of right now, we're requiring the GRE, Again, it might change, but because you would be coming into fall of 21, it is the GRE. We need three letters of recommendation, a personal statement, a, and a writing sample, along with your transcripts and, and everything else in the application. So those are the additional ones that you need for a PhD. They are gonna be looking for a writing sample, and the best person to talk to about with a PhD first um, is Dr. Hatch. So if you haven't talked to Dr. Hatch yet, she's a great one to talk to about um, what kind of research you want to do, making sure that we have the faculty to support your dissertation. Okay, um, are these admi uh, admissions requirements only available for fall enrollment? Are they going to be extended to spring semester? As of right now, they are not being exp expanded to spring semester because it is, it is almost May. It is the end of April. So we're kind of seeing where we're going to be now. If come fall, there's another stay at home or the stay at home is pushed until, you know, through fall semester, then yes, it would probably be extended until spring. But right now, we're only looking at fall semester for these admissions requirements. Again, they could go um, into spring. It all depends on how we are with COVID-19. If tomorrow they, you know, come up with a vaccine and that's great and everyone's vaccinated and we're all set in fall for fall to come on campus and you know the stay at home is lifted then no we're we've got the jerry waiver though so if you are looking for spring uh you can apply now for spring and do the gre waiver so the gre waiver is just saying hey i don't want um can i have my gre waived it's just asking us and the waiver is actually on our website and what we need with that is just a personal statement which again like i said before with these streamlined admissions requirements, you might be required to do a personal statement as part of your admissions process, depending on if the program director feels that they need more information from you. Um, so there's a personal statement, and there's a writing sample, a resume, um, and then uh, there's a form that you have to fill out. But you can right now request for your GRE to be waived for spring of 21. That's a really great question. Anybody else have any questions right now? Again, the chat feature is at the bottom. If you can just click on the chat, I'm at answering any questions. Okay, I graduated in 2011 with a GPA under 3.0. Should I wait and sit for the GPA? It depends on what your GPA is. You don't have to tell me exactly. I graduated with under a 3.0 from my undergraduate too. So, you know, just so y'all know, um, I did go on and get a master's degree and did just fine. Um, so if it's Okay, so if it's above a 2.75, 2.75 to 3.0, you are welcome to apply. And honestly, if you're applying for fall, you're not going to lose anything by just applying. And the thing is, is that something also to know about our, um, our admission is that it's rarely yes or no. It's usually yes and then a gradient, you know, to know where it's like, yes, you've been accepted, come on in, you're in the program. Then there's sometimes yes, but you have to do these core classes first and get a B or better before you can advance in the program. And then there's not no, not yes, 
but we need you to do a semester or two semesters as non-degree seeking. That's another option. If, you're, if your GPA from your undergraduate is below a, a 2.75, because that's the minimum for the university, that's not our minimum, it's the university's minimum. If your minimum is below a two, if your GPA is below a 2.75, you can always come in as non-degree seeking. You come in as non-degree seeking, you can do up to 16 credit hours, or it's really like two semesters as non-degree seeking, taking the master's classes that you would be taking as a degree seeking student, and then apply as a non-degree seeking student with above a 3.0. Because the thing is, is that if you come in as non-degree seeking and you're passing the classes, you still have to get a B or better, which is a master's minimum. You have to get a B or better in all of your classes, which means you have to get a 3.0 in your master's. So if you are come in, you get you know, a 3.5 in your first semester, you can apply to be a full-on grad student the next semester and be admitted with that GPA. Now with the GRE waiver, it might be a little bit of a gray area. You just, we can talk personally about that and I can explain that whole process, but that is definitely a process. So if you don't have a 3.0, it doesn't mean that you won't get into our master's programs, um, but you might, there might be some wiggle room in there and what we can do. Okay, if we apply for the fall semester well ahead of the July deadline, will we still be informed within a few weeks if our application or not until, like for your decision, um, you'll find out within two weeks of you applying what your admissions, if you've been accepted or not. Um, we do rolling admission, but we also, um, with, um, do -do -do, uh, with our um, program directors, the way they look at everybody's application is they look at it literally like um, just you. They don't say, here's everybody, and we're going to take the top 10%. No, we don't do that. We look at just your application. Can you um, complete the coursework? Are you going to be successful in this program? Is this program right for you? And if it is, then we don't have any problems, you know, accepting you. Um, and so that's something also to keep in mind is that you apply, if you applied, if everyone went on right now and applied in about two weeks, give or take about two weeks, you would have an admissions um, uh, answer and also be able to register for classes. So if you do get accepted right now, we're registering for fall 2020, spring of 21 and summer of 21. Cleveland State has something called multi-term registration, which means you can sign up for the full academic year in March. Um, so this is, this, I went to Cleveland State for my master's degree. And when I was here, I only went in and registered for classes twice. And it was the weirdest feeling of like, it was right after my first semester, I went in and I uh, signed up for the rest of my classes. And then that was it. Um, I'm used to waking up early in the fall and quickly signing up for my spring classes or waking up early in the spring and signing up for my fall classes. So we have this multi-term registration and that way you will know what classes you're taking from one semester to the next and you'll see the availability and stuff like that. So it's rare that you get like kicked out of classes or they fill up too much. Um, if you pursue a degree as non-degree seeking to raise your GPA, will those masters, yeah. So they're the same, they're literally the same classes. You're just not classified as a degree seeking student. So um, it's almost like saying um, we're not going to take responsibility for, you know, your classes right now. You're not part of our accreditation numbers. I guess that's the way to put it. The way we, why we have our admissions requirements, which are very mid-range requirements, is that we just want to make sure that you can handle the coursework. If you can't handle the coursework, it's irresponsible of us to let you into the program and say, well, if you fail out, you fail out. That's your $1,000 or $2,000 that you're wasting. We don't want to do that. We want to see everyone successful in the program. So by you doing non-degree seeking, what you're doing is saying, listen, I'm going to prove to you that I can do this and it's at no risk to you. So this is where we come with our um are non-degree seeking. So they are literally the same core classes. So when you look at the core for like planning, right, you'll take 
up to four core classes that are the same four core classes that a, a Muppet student would be taking. And it's almost as if you haven't lost any time. It's the same with the PhD. You can start as non-degree seeking as with do the prerequisites and not lose time or with the MSUS and not lose time, but you're still not losing any time. And that's another thing is that we don't want you to take any classes you don't have to. And those are all things that we can work on. I hope that answered that. If a candidate comes in as non-degree seeking student because they have missed the doctoral program deadline and the student has an MPA, is it possible to waive some of the core classes? Okay, so you would want to talk to Dr. Hatch about that. So you talk to Dr. Hatch and you talk to our graduate advisor, Dave Riggi, and you guys would map out what prerequisites you would need to take and, and how that would work. Um, and Dr. Hatch will, will definitely help you out with that. So. Um, any other questions right now? These are all really, really great questions, you guys. Really, really great. Okay. I am, feel free to keep asking questions in the chat feature down below. Feel free to keep asking those. I'm watching the chat. Um, if I didn't answer anything, and then I'm just going to continue on real quick. So we are about engaged learning at CSU. So we do have a lot of internships available. Um, as in we work with a lot of partners in the city to get internships. So it's something that we really want is to be able to, you know, we are an urban college in an urban setting. And so we have this really great connection with the community of a lot of great alumni that are doing a lot of great things in the city. And so if you're looking for an internship, we can help you out with that. We also have a really great mentoring program, which is what I'm most excited about when it comes to the mentoring program. Um, with mentoring, you basically tell us who you want to work for, what you want to do, and we'll find somebody on our mentoring list who matches up with you, whether it's planning, government, nonprofit. We have, um, you know, mentors doing all sorts of things, and they will meet with you once a month for the full academic year. And a lot of these mentors are director level, like director level and above. So they, um, they're well established in their career, and then they just meet with you. One of our um, graduate students worked with uh, ODOT, the Ohio Department of Transportation one year and did a bridge surveying project. And then the next year his mentor was with RTA and he worked with the GIS office for RTA and really enjoyed it. So we do have two student organizations that you are welcome to join. One is the APA, which is the American Planning Association. And the other one is ICMA, which is International City Managers Association. APA is a really, they're, they're both really great organizations. APA is, is really great for two reasons. One is that they have a bake sale in our atrium all the time. Um, and it's like a dollar for um, all these baked goods that you can get. And it's really great. But what they do with the fundraising is that they turn it around and um, they take the fundraising and they do some other fundraisers and they take a group of students, a group of our APA students, to the national conference. So they were supposed to go to Louisiana this year, um, but unfortunately that got postponed. And then last year though, they went to San Diego. So I think they took last year 12 APA students um, to go there. And you don't have to be a planning student to do it. Um, they also have weekly meetings or bi bi-monthly meetings, so twice a month meetings, um, and they bring in guest speakers, whether it's alumni or partners or anything like that, they bring them in and talk to you. So it's a great networking um, ability right there, and also it's, it's a good student organization to be part of. And then ICMA works closely with APA, with the International City Managers Association. We also have the Levin Day of Service, which is twice a year. So we do it once in the spring and once in the fall. Uh, in the fall of last year, we went to the food bank and we made packed lunches to hand out to the homeless people in Cleveland. And then um, in the spring, we just we just got in doing our Levin Day of Service. It was like the end of February. Um, and we went to the Cleveland or the Kids Cleveland Book Bank and sorted through books to help um, to help students or to help uh, children out, um, getting all these books out to them. Then we have our vast alumni network. We do um, alumni networking events and alumni events that you're welcome to come to, and of course, our forum program. So you guys can actually see our past forums that we've done. Basically, we present um, urban topics to the public, whether we bring in guest speakers from out of town or our own faculty talk about their research. We talk about what's going on in urban areas. 
So watch out because I think we're going to be doing some virtual forums, especially during COVID-19. We're already talking about the policies that are going on right now. Um, and you'll see that in class right now. So you will see um, in some of the policy classes that our master's students are in, they're finishing up this semester. But uh, at least one of the classes, the final project was changed to focus on the policies of COVID-19 and to discuss how it's going because this is something that we do look at. We also, and I forgot to put it on here, we also have a live-in podcast that you are welcome to check out. It's also on our YouTube page, um, and it's a really great place that I, I'm the host of the podcast. Um, it's myself and another uh, person, Molly Schnoke, and we bring in people and we talk about what's going, like urban research, what's going on and what does other things mean. So the one that's gonna be coming out, I think it should be uploading today or tomorrow, is gonna be on smart cities. And that one actually went international where I interviewed uh, Dr. Sasha Dresdik from Croatia. It was the first time me going international with a podcast. But you can see them on YouTube and then they're also on Spotify, I believe. So we do have graduate assistance. The priority deadline was March 1st. However, you can still apply for a GA position. We have a GA in our office. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it on today. She's usually on the webinars. Um, she's an MPA student and she's graduating in two weeks. So big shout out to her for graduating in like two weeks. I'm so excited. Um, and so then we'll need another GA. But uh, you work 20 hours a week, you can't work outside of it, but basically the idea is, is during the day you're working with a faculty member on research, and then in the evening you are in class. So that's another thing that I want to talk about our classes. Oh, here are just some of the deadlines. So um, our classes, they're all offered in the evening once a week. Now, all of our classes right now are obviously remote because it's a stay at home order, so they are being done remote. There's talks about one day putting one of our master's degrees online. However, master's degree is a lot of discussion. And so what we are trying to do the most is having you in person and discussing. So if the stay at home lifts, we will be back on campus in fall. So you'll have class uh, once a week per class. So you might have, you know, intro to planning on Monday and then, you know, on Wednesday, you'll have um, urban design. And those are the, the, you know, the two, you know, classes that you'd be taking. And so it's only two nights a week here on campus. Um, I'm not on campus, but, you know, on CSU campus. Uh, it's also only Monday through Thursday that we offer our master's classes. There are no master's classes Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, which is super great because that leaves your Friday night wide open for reading and studying because that's what master's degree is. I can't tell if anyone uh, laughed at that. Yeah. Anyways, how long is the class time? So the classes are really um, nine or six to nine fifty. There is in the planning they do planning studio, which is um, in lieu of a thesis. They do a development project, and so the classes for that one are like Monday, Wednesday from like um, it's like four thirty to five fifty. But typically our classes are nine or six to nine fifty. Now that sounds super long, um, but uh, I I've taken classes that long, and um, by the time you really get into the discussion, it's like hour two that you're really into discussion. And there's plenty of breaks. They take breaks, and then you do a lot of activities and a lot of discussion. So you get a lot done in those four hours, and also some faculty don't keep you the full four hours. So close to it. Any other questions? I'm going to give a minute for questions so that I can. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to go on the chat down below. What are some of the qualifications you need to apply for the GA program? So for the GA, you have to have a 3.0 uh, coming in. Now, that's not to say that after your first semester, if you come in below, uh, you're admitted below a 3.0 having from your undergrad, that's OK, because your first semester, you'll get a 3.0, and then you can apply for a GA for the spring. Um, but you have to have a 3.0, and then there is actually on our website, there's a, on the left-hand side, on the, it's urban.csuohio.edu, if you go there, on the left-hand side is, it says, like, graduate assistantship, just click on that, and that will lead you to the page and where you apply, and that one needs a little bit more, it does need a personal statement and say what you're interested in research-wise, because how we choose our GAs is basically almost like, um, 
almost like you're applying for a job. So you apply and you say, I'm really interested in environmental policy and, you know, and housing. So when you put that down, when one of our faculty members gets a grant to do research or needs to do research and they have a GA position open, they will contact our grad advisor and say, hey, I need anybody who's really interested in like environmental and housing. Dave Riggi will pull all the names of the applications that say, you know, housing or environmental and give them all to the, the faculty. The faculty will call the GAs that they're interested in and then interview you and then that's how you become a GA. There are other, there's TAs, which don't actually teach classes. TAs don't teach classes. They really just like, um, they uh, grade undergraduate papers and they also um, uh, like do tutoring. So we have a couple tutoring opportunities available in that way. And you don't, you can work outside of that. So we have students that will take like a 10 hour GA position. It doesn't, uh, cover tuition, but what it will do is it will give you like a stipend. So if you want, it's almost like a second job. So you can get like paid hourly to be a TA for faculty as well. So if you're looking to maybe just pick up like a second job, it's a really great opportunity to just do that. So what other questions do you guys have? These are really great questions. I'm going to give you guys like two more minutes. Okay. Okay, so if you have been accepted, congratulations. If you have been accepted and you're interested in where to go from here. So you definitely wanna fill out your FAFSA. It's a free, the free federal financial aid. So what you wanna do is you wanna fill that out and make sure that you select Cleveland State. So what that does, I used to work in financial aid, so it's kind of complicated, I understand it. But so how that works is that you fill out your FAFSA and then you put Cleveland State down to have it sent and then Cleveland State receives it. Then you reach out to Dave O'Riggy. Um, and if you need his information, it's on our website. If not, email me, I'll forward it on to, to Dave. You probably got an email from Dave uh, to your student email, your new student email um, that said, hey, I'm Dave. If you need to uh, register for any classes, I'm the grad advisor. He is meeting with students virtually like this um, to get them all set up for their classes. Once you register for classes, Cleveland State will then bill you and when they go to bill you, they will pull your, your FAFSA in and give you all the financial aid that you are eligible for. For grad, unfortunately, it's usually a lot of loans. Um, you can look for outside scholarships. Our scholarship application deadline for fall 2020 and spring of 21 was March 1st. So we're past the scholarship deadline for that. There are outside scholarships that you are welcome to look for, but you won't actually be billed and none of your financial aid will actually be dispersed until the week before school starts. So I hope that helps. I know it's kind of convoluted. Long story short, fill out your FAFSA, talk to Dave Riggi, we'll get you all set. Any other questions? I'm a wealth of knowledge. All right, so um, if you guys have anything, if anything pops up, um, while you are, you know, when this, after this is ended, feel free. I emailed everybody this link. So thank you for finding the link. Oh, what's the best way to start on the non-degree path? So to start on the non-degree path, it's, that is also just a free application. And all we need for that one is when you go to apply, right? Um, it's the same application as grad school, only it'll ask you what you're looking to do. Certificate seeking, degree seeking, or non-degree seeking. You just click non-degree seeking urban urban studies uh, or urban affairs and then fill out the application. And that is also a free application. And the only thing we need is your transcripts. And the only thing we need for the transcripts is just showing that you graduated with a bachelor's degree. So that's all you have to do. And then you contact Dave and he'll work, he'll walk you through the process of applying for or uh, registering for classes and everything like that. So that's how you do the non-degree. All right, well, it has been, I'm, I'm still waiting for, if you have any more questions, feel free to get them in while I start saying my goodbyes. Um, follow up me on Instagram. Uh, so I run the college Instagram. So we are at CSU underscore urban on Instagram. 
feel free to go on there to see if any updates on any events that are going on. Um, you can go online to on our website. It'll have like for a newsletter, sign up for the newsletter to see what we're doing in the college. You can also sign up for the forum events. Um, they'll email you anytime there's a forum event. Go on, see our past forums on our YouTube and on our website. Check out me on our podcast. Um, the next one is going to be on smart cities and it's really, really interesting. It's actually a two parter. So we're going to get the first part up and then wait a couple of days and we'll put the second part up. Um, because it's such an interesting conversation when we're having the conversation, when we finally finished it, uh, we were sitting back and we're like, oh, there's so much more we can talk about. So there's even talks about doing a smart cities, um, a smart city series. Um, which will be really great. But definitely follow me on Instagram. That's where you'll see all of our recruitment events and where I go when I travel. So hopefully I'll be traveling in the fall um, to different locations in Northeast Ohio, and I will definitely Instagram all that. But thank you guys so much for coming on. I will be forwarding all of your information on the program directors um, so that they can reach out to you if you have any questions for them. They're happy to answer any questions. Um, Oh, hold on. Would I be able to send Dave's? Um, yeah, I can send. I can send everybody. Um, I can send you Dave's email for sure. If anyone needs Dave's email, just reply back to my email and I'll send it on. So Dave Riggie's email. Anybody who needs it, just reply from to my email to me because um, I'm not going to say it over Zoom because it's uh, an interesting spelling to his last name. So I will, I will forward it to, um, so if you email me back and say, hey, I need Dave's email, I'll email it to you. But other than that, thank you guys so much for coming by. Um, I'm going to be doing more of these. So if you think of anything, or if you want to meet with me, just me, um, I'm happy to also help with that. But thank you guys so much for coming on today. It's been really, really great. And I hope you guys all have a um, absolutely fantastic weekend. Hopefully it's nice. Stop snowing, right? <laughs> and you have a really great day.